Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Winelect. And today we're going to be looking at Linkerd and how you can use that to monitor workloads on Kubernetes. So today we're going to be looking at Linkerd, which is one of the service meshes that you can put onto Kubernetes. There's actually many, and we're going to be doing a couple of these. Linkerd is the first one I'm going to look at, but we're also going to look at console, and we're also going to look at Istio. Istio is probably the most popular one, but I wanted to cover these three because they tend to be the three largest ones that most folks use. So to look at a brief review of what a service mesh is, let's take a look at the architecture and get a discussion of how this works, and then we'll go into a deep dive on Linkerd and look at how it works with AKS. So to look at the architecture, we have two basic components that we have to talk about, which is the control plane and then what's called the data plane. Now the data plane is what responsible for running your application workloads and the control plane is responsible for managing the service mesh and it has all the supporting services that are needed for the service mesh to work. Your application then will be in a container and then it will be deployed in a pod with what is called a sidecar proxy. And the sidecar proxy is what's responsible for doing all the network working that the service mesh needs in order to create the secure connections between everything on your particular service mesh implementation. And then the service mesh has a administrator that's going to set it up and or look at the control plane and look at metrics or things like that. And he's going to interact with the control plane. Then the control plane is going to interact with the pods by way of the proxy. And then the proxy itself also is responsible for the service to service communications that are used by the services on the service mesh, as well as receiving the request coming in from external users that are using the application. So the service mesh is the proxy and the interlay of the communications between those. And that's what actually creates the mesh. You end up with a web of different kinds of communication between all of those various services that are running within the context of that service mesh. And that's where the service mesh gets its name from. The proxy is also responsible for reporting telemetry out of the proxies back to some kind of monitoring and logging solution. And then that can be viewed inside of the control plane or by the administrator. And that's one thing that we're gonna look at when we look at Linkerd in our upcoming demo. I've already deployed Linkerd already to my Azure Kubernetes cluster. I created that in the portal. Then I follow the instructions on a link that I have in the video description below on how to set that up. It's very easy to do. Basically cut and copy and paste a bunch of commands into a PowerShell or into a bash session, and it will stand that up for you. So once that's ready to go, you can then just connect to the dashboard and it will show you Linkerd inside of a browser. Now Linkerd in a browser is going to look something like this, where you have uh, Linkerd running and what you have is a display of different metrics that you can look at inside of this particular uh, Linkerd display here. And the control plane will show you things about the uh, kinds of number of instances that you have running for various parts of Linkerd, such as Grafana or Identity or Prometheus, whatever those might be. And I only have a single node here running, so I have a single virtual machine. So we're only gonna see uh, one instance of each of these running on side of my Kubernetes cluster here. And then if you click through this, you can see that you have different views into different kinds of workloads that daemon sets or deployments or jobs or pods. Uh, replication controls, stateful sets, etc., And then you can look at the various routes that are available to you as well inside of the dashboard. So the dashboard gives you the ability to basically monitor uh, your Linkerd instance. So whenever you go to deploy something to Linkerd to get it onto Linkerd, uh, it's fairly easy to do. So what you end up doing is decorating a annotating a particular deployment or a uh, particular uh, ingress to get the kind of metrics that will show up here. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that. So I have here before you a Kubernetes manifest file that is setting up a bunch of different services, deployments, and an ingress controller for this. I'm using an Nginx ingress controller here. Now, whenever I set up the ingress controller, there's two things I need to add to the ingress controller to make sure that the telemetry is reported back to uh, Linkerd so that you can view it. And that is this one right here where I have this 
uh, configuration snippet right here that's basically going to inject some additional headers into the actual payloads that are coming through this so that it can know about the service ports and other things that are available on this. And this particular one I'm using, you know, service name, namespace, and then svc.cluster.local, and then the service port, which could be port 80 or port 443 or, or some other port that I might be uh, running on this. And this is telemetry that is used to identify uh, requests coming in through an ingress controller on, on my uh, particular instance of Linkerd. In addition to this, there's a few things I need to add to my deployments so that the daemon will be able to identify these workloads as well and it and will be able to inject the sidecar proxy into those uh, daemons. And that looks like this right here where I have my deployments defined here. I have a deployment kind, and this would work for pods or any other kind of uh, controller that you might be using on Kubernetes. I have to set an annotation here under the metadata for the template. So this is my, my spec for my container. This is the template that my deployment is using. And part of the metadata is something called annotations. And annotations are used by things like Linkerd and other kinds of services to identify particular key value pairs that it looks for in order to be able to set up a meta type of services that go along with Kubernetes. And in this case, I'm using a annotation for Linkerd so that it will inject the uh, sidecar proxy into all the pods that get deployed as part of the deployments that I'm putting onto my cluster here. So I set this for all of my particular deployments that I have in this particular manifest file uh, defined here. I have one for this service and all the other services that I have defined here. So in, case, in this case, I have three uh, deployments, three services, and one ingress that are defined here. And so to make this work, I can simply run a command inside of my uh, command prompt down here or my PowerShell session and deploy that. I'm gonna open up in a new browser and go ahead and deploy this. I already have it, the, the browser up here. I can do a kube ctl um, and then create and then dash f ingress. Uh, that's my JMeter file. And it's going to create a bunch of services. So I'm going to let those create and then I'll come back and look at those once they're done. Okay, now I have my ingress as well as my services and deployments configured and running. So if I do kube ctl get services, I should see a couple of services running here which are Commander Keen and two node apps. And then if I do get ingress, I should be able to see the uh, ingress controller running there. And there's the public IP address. I'm going to need that for in just a minute. Let's go ahead and copy that. And if I do get pods, I should be able to see all the pods I created. And notice that I have uh, two of two ready here. And that's because each of these pods have two containers in them now rather than a single container because the deployment only specified one container, but it injected that sidecar proxy container uh, to add one to it. So there's now two of two containers ready in each of these uh, various environments that I have here that are running these various applications. So let's go ahead and run this in a browser and see what it looks like. Um, now this is linker that we have here. I'm going to open up this just to show you what this looks like. Uh, I'm going to do slash app one, and this will, uh, give me an error here, but you see HTTPS, uh, I have a it automatically configured HTTPS endpoint for me when I install Linkerd, but it is, it's just exposing a endpoint here that is for my node app that's just reporting back information. So it's changing the uh, ID of that app to the, uh, the node that is actually running on that inside of the pod. So that's basically what that's doing. If I look at app two, uh, same thing here, and I can see there. Now, if I come over here and look at Linkerd and I look at deployments, you can see here now I have these uh, available inside of my uh, Linkerd control panel here. And I have my Keen, Commander Keen deployment. I have my Node app deployment here, Node app one, Node app two. And you can see that there's stuff coming into it where I was just uh, hitting F5 on Node app one. And if I come down here and look at the pods, you can also see that I was load balancing between these three pods here. So this is some of the kind of metrics that you can get out of Linkerd. Now, I'm going to take this IP address and put it into JMeter and generate some traffic for this so we can look at it and look what it look see what it looks like inside of Grafana as well. So if I come over here to JMeter, I already have configured here uh, one of my um, 
loads that I want to generate here and I'm pointing it to that IP address on port 80 and the HTTP request is going to be an app one and I have another one on app two. So we should be able to see load generated for both of these. And then down here under my thread group, I have a, let's set this uh, threshold to say 60 seconds and let's, let's, uh, ram, let's take that up to about 700 uh, different requests and then hit go here. And we still should start to see stuff happening over here in JMeter. And uh, that's going to be ramping up a number of requests here uh, and spinning up some threads so that it can generate some traffic against this. So let's go over here and look at this and see what's going on with it. So if I come over here and look, I can see that I have all of my uh, pods have been lit up now where the requests are coming in. If I come over here to my deployments, I can see the requests per second here as they're coming in. If I click on one of these, it will give me a zoomed in view of that. And I can see the pods as well as the inbound, uh, the TCP uh, traffic and so on that are available inside of these as well. And if I wanted to uh, see where it's coming from, I can see that I can do all of that kind of stuff right here inside of this particular instance here. Now, if I wanted to view this in Grafana, I simply click over here on the Grafana link and this will take me to a UI that will show me uh, graphs of that same basic telemetry and it's a dashboard where I can see, you know, stuff coming in at 12 rates, uh, 12 requests per second. I can see, you know, the latency I'm you know, hitting around uh, you know 20 seconds or 20 milliseconds or so for latency. And you can see here the success rate. I'm not getting any errors because I'm really not generating a lot of stress on this particular API. It's really just uh, rather low traffic for this particular API, but you can see there that I'm generating a fair amount of, of requests coming in. I can also look at deployment to, you know, it should see similar uh, telemetry coming out of this one as well. It looks like my traffic did finish and everything did finish successfully. So we saw this generating some traffic as well. And that's the linkered UI where you can kind of see where things are happening. So if I start that up again, we will we should be able to see the linkered UI light up as well as uh, Grafana here uh, uh, light up as well. And uh, so we can see that traffic coming in in real time using this particular dashboard. Now, I want to look at one more demo. I want to show you one more feature of this or show you uh, the ability to trace traffic using routes. And we're, the, the other, we're going to look at this tool in a second. But I want to, we can look at taps and, and top uh, to see what the uh, top names at the top requests are coming in. So if I select the default namespace and then I hit start, it's going to show me you know, traffic coming into this uh, from these tools down here. This is a different view into the same kind of thing that I was looking from. And it's showing me the source here and then it's going, you know, the get the method, the path that is requesting and then it's going into uh, the number of requests coming in, the the, the best response time and uh, the worst response time and uh, had 605 microseconds versus 11 milliseconds. So these are responding rather quickly and uh, we can see that I'm getting a lot of requests coming in as well. So these are some of the tools available in Linkerd for doing some of the monitoring. So let's go ahead and look at my other configuration that I have in Notepad++ and I'll show you a different uh, tool that is the routes tool where you can kind of monitor route traffic. Now for this particular uh, YAML file that I have here, I have services and deployments. I don't have an ingress controller defined here. This particular one, it has a service defined here and it's got a deployment here where I have the, a front end app. And then behind it, I have a service called backend that is exposing a backend deployment. And so these are basically two deployments and two services. One of the deployments has an app that's gonna call the backend uh, deployment which will then have a backend um, app running inside of a container that I can return results to. So this is a, a two-tier application. And what I can use this for is to show you how you can monitor routes between different services running inside of your particular environment. So let's go ahead and deploy this guy. So if I come back over here and deploy him, I can simply just do a, a kubectl, a create-f, and then do my uh, routes uh, YAML. And let's go ahead and let this deploy. And then once that comes back, I'll uh, switch back over to uh, Linkerd and we can look at the uh, link. We'll look at Linkerd and look at the dashboard and see these two new services added 
as well as do another demo where we can generate some load using uh, JMeter and then trace that traffic back through the stack and see where things are happening there as well. Okay, now that I have my services up and running for this front end and back end, we have these uh, running right here. I have my back end service and my front end service right here. And I have this public IP address associated with this since I'm not using an ingress controller for this particular application. Now uh, to generate some load on this, I'm gonna use this IP address here. Let's go look at what this uh, looks like in Linkerd here. And I've deployed this back into my default namespace. So it's gonna show up right here. And here I have my backend app and my frontend app, and it's uh, just two meshed uh, different services running in the same namespace as my other ones. But these two have uh, the ability to call one another, as well the front end does to the back end here. And so I can use a, a tool down here to show that traffic. But let's uh, pull this up in a browser just to show you what it's doing. If I go to HTTP colon slash slash, and, and then I get a report back from the back end service that says hello from back end app. And it's going to uh, give me the idea of that back end app, but that's being called from a front end application that is exposed as a service here. And so that way I'm getting requests into this whole thing. So let's take that IP address and put it into JMeter here. Let's go ahead and open up my other JMeter here and uh, open up this uh, particular JMX file. And let's configure this guy to make sure that he's hitting the right IP address. So I should be able to come down here and go to my request defaults here, plug in that IP address. And I just have a simple request going out to the root of that. So it should get some results back. Uh, thread group, so we can do a ramp up of 60 seconds and let's increase that load to 700. And I can hit go and that's gonna start spinning up traffic onto that particular uh, endpoint. So let's go back over to Linkerd and see what that looks like. So now I see some traffic coming into this guy and I can come now come down here to routes and monitor this in real time. If I go over here to namespace route and then hit my source front end app. And then if I go to default and back end app here, I should be able to monitor the requests coming into back end. And so here I'm monitoring everything that is going between these two particular uh, routes here. And so I can see where stuff is coming into it from the front end. Uh, front end is hitting front end app and then it's going back into the back end app uh, down there as well. So uh, that is, allows me to monitor specific routes between different kinds of services. So if I didn't see any traffic between these two kinds of services, I would not be able to see, I would know that there's no traffic going between them. And so that tells me that I am seeing traffic and I'm able to monitor that with this routes tool here. And then if I want to do top again, I could simply do that and just hit start here. And uh, that's not gonna generate traffic because it sounds like a JMeter is spinning down. Yeah, it did, so let me start that back up. Start sending more requests in. And we can see here that I have the uh, uh, traffic coming in from uh, a particular IP into another one and into my default namespace. And we can see that that traffic is being generated again on top. So here we have uh, two demos of monitoring services and using a service mesh using Linkerd. It's a, it's a more basic tool. It's probably the lightest one that we're gonna look at, but we're gonna be looking at other ones in the uh, coming weeks where we're gonna be looking at console as well as Istio. So stay tuned for that content on Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.